It's a modular synthesizer. It's, um, this is a little bit of a kid in a candy store thing going on here. It's one of what, what I think is useful designs from kind of every era of electronic music, starting in the 60s and going through present day. A series of little individual sound modules that each one has a particular function, and they're all standardized so that they use the same power connections, speak the same voltage, you know, audio control information, you know, note values, things like that. <coughs> and they all screw it into this giant orange case that's a powered case with rails running through the back. You can plug them all in one at a time. A lot of analog stuff, like, you know, based on the Moogs or Buklas. A lot of things that kind of go into the 70s, and you know, different kinds of chip filters and things like that. Things from the 80s that are like um, soundboards from like video games or old home computers from the 80s. And then some contemporary things like amplification circuits and mixers and things like that. I've patched it up in a way that it's, I kind of have everything talking to each other, but as far as how the piece progresses, it's totally different. I mean, I have no idea what it's going to sound like until I start going. There's an amazing scene for this particular kind of, this format where lots of people all over the world are working with this particular format, and there's a um, some healthy competition to kind of come up with new things that people need in their rigs, you know. Uh, Lampo, is, it's a project for Chicago. Uh, we present experimental music, uh, sound art, or we call sort of intermedia art, be it sound and maybe film or video. And uh, we bring artists here to Chicago, or we work with artists who are here in Chicago and do uh, about a dozen concerts a year, special projects. Uh, and whether it's local or visiting artists, we ask them to do specific work for Lampo. We've been doing Lampo now for going on 15 years, so I um, have no plans to uh, ever stop. Uh, we'll never stop. Gets, gets out of it. Dr. Hamza, he'll tell you what the audience gets out of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's interviewing me, asking me what does the audience get out of these concerts. Salvation, man. Salvation. Yeah. Oh, good show. I mean, no, no more or less than they would get out of a, a classical gig downtown at, at Orchestra Hall. The empty bottle or going to the hideout, whatever floats your boat. The sounds turn them on. Noise, sound, I mean, it's been fair game over the course of the 20th century, uh, and there is no denying that, you know, how we hear now the sonic landscape, that full range and palette is available with no sense of being, you know, more or less than another kind of music, and that's happened across the board in literature, in the visual arts, you know, so for those who would say, but it isn't music. I mean, we've heard that so many times before about it not being art, to the point where it's like, that's, that's, you're right, that's, it's material. It's sonic material now, and there are lots of means to generate it, to capture it, reproduce it, arrange it, and hence make art out of it. There's some stuff in, 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 in one of these boxes that um, does some vibrating. Uh, there's some electromagnets and contact mics and stuff that vibrates, and the magnets are just sort of a way to nudge the frequencies or the oscillations in different directions. I like the physical aspect of it, you know, not so much like what you would experience like listening on headphones or at home on a stereo or something. I think it's nice to be able to get a physical, visceral experience happening. But I don't, to be honest, like, I can't really explain why or what. It's just something I, you know, am compelled to, to do. I got some real nice uh, comments. 
One guy said he'd been waiting all his life to, to hear that. <laughs> <laughs>